Hi, Kobe. Hey, Shani. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Great, great. I'm looking forward for today's conversation because I know we're going to talk about something that a lot of DevOps people should know and maybe they do know, but they don't know exactly why they should use it and also where to learn about it and what's important to know. I know you've got all the answers. Yeah. Yeah. So can we start? Sure. Today we'll talk about how to boost productivity uh, with the dynamic environments in Kubernetes. So this topic is related to like all DevOps companies, all, dev- all companies that have DevOps culture inside of them and uses DevOps practices. Basically, the end client of the DevOps teams, in this case, is the developers. And the main goal of this let's say, phase is to like boost the productivity of the development team to reduce the dev cycle uh, time and duration uh, with dynamic isolated environments on top of Kubernetes. So um, how can DevOps help developers? So let's start with the problem first. In companies that have DevOps, How many times a day DevOps needs to address issues such as conflicts in testing environments, errors, issues during the development phase, or even getting the errors or the issues in very, very, very late stage of the development cycle? What problem are we talking about? We're talking about the problem of, first of all, conflicts in the development life cycle. In the development life cycle, phase? in the testing of the development uh, life cycle phase. So imagine you are developing, uh, we are both developing the same component new versions and you want to test your component. I want to test my version and uh, we have one development cluster in our organization. So what will happen in this case? So in this case, you will deploy first your I know your version of the component, you will start testing your code, your version, you see if everything is okay. Then I will deploy my version on the cluster. What will happen then is that we can have conflicts in our cluster, in our testing environment. Yes, so you will use your version, I will use my version, and then there is no isolation between our versions here. And uh, this is an issue. For developers. For developers, yeah. So with dynamic environments, we can just spin up another uh, environments, uh, identical environments across our shared cluster with full isolation and security that you can work independently on your component version and I can on mine. Identical? Identical. So what you're saying is, if I understand correctly, is that basically the DevOps person expert, if we want to yeah. call them that, will um, make or build, design a dynamic environment for developers that will enable them to work on their versions at the same time. That's correct. And it also saves money. That's correct. All right. Doesn't everybody know how to do that? No. So... The whole subject of dynamic environments in Kubernetes is something that uh, grew up in the last two or three years. Um, there are several triggers that brought up to this stage, and I can say that okay, the first one is obviously Kubernetes, cloud-native development. A lot of companies are running their workloads and the production environments, even I don't know if it's SaaS product or even if it's not on the Kubernetes clusters. And this is the first trigger, the adoption rate of Kubernetes in organization. The second trigger is that a new practice came in the last two, three, four years, and this practice called GitOps, meaning that we are managing our infrastructure and deployment declaratives inside Git repositories in a source code management tool, such as GitHub, GitLab, whatever. And we treat our infrastructure and declarative deployments uh, manifest just the way we are uh, treating our source code of the application. And those two triggers led us to understanding that dynamic environments is achievable and the benefits of dynamic environments because 
we can easily create or recreate environments inside Kubernetes cluster. We can recreate entire clusters that are identical to each other with fully automated pipelines and fully automated jobs. Can our deployments to run different versions of the components, but in the same environments, and all of those are achievable because of the adoption rate of Kubernetes and the adoption rate of the GitOps practices in the last few years. So why should DevOps person put the time and effort to learn how to design such dynamic environments? Let's say that uh, we have three reasons why. The first reason is like, say, the holy grail of the DevOps engineers in our organization, which is to reduce the feedback loop for development processes, to reduce the whole development life cycle or development cycle in the organization, and to just build a robust and agile, let's say, framework for developers to work on. And this is the, the goal in most of the, the organization of DevOps. And uh, the second thing is that in some cases, the DevOps has a, like an, a direct impact on the costs of the development cycle. Let's say that the majority of the cost is in the modern uh, world is going to the cloud, yeah, because we are running all of our workloads on the cloud and DevOps is responsible in uh, a lot of cases on reducing this cost. With dynamic environments, we can achieve that because we can get all the benefits that we talked about, the efficiency, the collaboration, and then stuff like that. And we can get it in a lower cloud cost or lower workload cost, compute cost, than uh, in the previous uh, way of work, which is static environments. Where do you see the importance of designing uh, dynamic environments in your line of work? So we in the Valley, we have several, uh, we are a professional services company that providing DevOps services to uh, some dozens of clients. And uh, the majority of the clients has, uh, let's say, the same technological stack, which means a very popular cloud, Kubernetes cluster, infrastructure as a code with Terraform, and in a lot of cases, GitOps with Argo CD, for example. So once a client has all of these capabilities already, he's using those tools. So once the clients have those uh, tools in use, they just need to understand how to utilize them to achieve or to implement dynamic environments. And in this case, the clients want to uh, implement this because of the uh, benefits that we talked about earlier. And that's it. So you mentioned Argo CD. What are the main tools you can use or the popular ones to design such dynamic environments? So Argo CD is one tool, and this is the most popular right now tool for implementing dynamic environments in a GitOps way, let's say. There are several other tools that we can use to achieve that. Uh, for example, Flux CD, which is quite similar to Argo CD, which also utilizes uh, uh, the GitOps practices, but is less popular than Argo CD. We have tools like uh, Garden or DevSpace, which is a uh, CNCF open source project that uh, allows developers to create isolated environments in isolated namespace in a shared cluster that is only accessible by the developers. And in this case, the developer can just write his code from his ID, save the code, and the code is automatically deployed in the cluster in his isolated environments, which called the hot reloading feature. Those are the most popular tools currently in the field of uh, implementing dynamic environments on top of Kubernetes. So if there is a DevOps expert that is listening to us right now mm -hmm. and has not yet build the, these dynamic environments, mm -hmm. what is the first step they need to take in order to do that? So the first step is to try and understand if the organization that it works on is looking for it. Because perhaps they don't use several tools that we mentioned, for example, Kubernetes, and not everybody use Kubernetes. And then we can achieve dynamic environments, but this not is another- Not everybody. Not everybody. <laughs> But this is another topic on how to achieve dynamic environments without Kubernetes. We'll 
maybe discuss it in another episode or so. But in order to start working on implementing dynamic environments in the organization, the DevOps engineer, first of all, must ensure that all the different components of the dynamic environments implementation are in place. So we have Kubernetes check. We have some sort of GitOps practices in the organization, such as Argo CD with a Git repository for our uh, deployments manifest, check. Then they need to glue everything uh, together, meaning that they can connect, for example, yes, one of the most popular use cases of dynamic environments is once a developer wants to test his version of components, so he's writing a code, writing, 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 and then they create a pull request with the new changes, in the Git repository of the source code. Once a pull request is created, then we have like a job that triggers some sort of automation process that updates the Git repository of the deployment manifest. Once the deployment manifests are updated, Argo CD or any other GitOps tool is listening to this repository. Once a drift is detected, then it's spinning up a new environment for this pull request of the developer. The developer would then have access to this dynamic environment, isolated environments with his newly created component versions. And then once the pull request is uh, closed, the dynamic environment is just shutting down. And with that, we can cost money and efficiency. So if a DevOps expert wants to move forward with this, who do they need to convince at the company about moving forward? Does this goes without saying or we need to convince someone this is important? So it depends on the company size and the company culture. In some companies, the DevOps has, let's say, a, a full freedom of creating and di- dictating the development process of the developers in the organization. This is usually a small companies with one DevOps man show and stuff like that. And then in this case, he's just implementing it, he's guiding the developers how to use it, and that's it. But in most cases, the need for this feature or this uh, ability is coming from the developers themselves. So the developers are just telling the DevOps or the VPRNDs or the managers that they have pains, they moving slower in the development process, they have issues that they are just don't get the feedback uh, in the time and stuff like that. And once the developer raises their concerns about it, basically the DevOps engineering organization is building up the solution, the vpr and is approving, and that's it. Do you think the developers will say thank you? Yeah, yeah, some of them, yes. Some of them will say thank you. If you would imagine the dynamic environment as a place in the world, where would that be? Interesting question. I would say something in the Scandinavian countries. I don't know why this is just an association that I have in my mind. Well, like a, a place of being creative. Yeah, like Norway, Sweden, something like that. Yeah. I thought about, you know, the movie um, Rolf Breaks the Internet. Yep. So they enter the internet. This is how I imagine dynamic environments. Something like that, actually. Yep. All right. Thank you, Kobe. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And I think we have a lot to talk about in the next episode.